Yo guys, welcome to another game analysis video we have got here. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to release the, the final part of Arabia tomorrow. I have finished it, but yeah, I thought I'd give people a chance to catch up since there's been a lot of parts in a row and some of them have been quite long. So yeah, let's do this. We got a game as CM on Deity. Uh, this is using my difficulty mod and, uh, you know, the last VP patch. So yeah, let's have a little look at it. Uh, CM. Let's go through the CM stuff. So. Father governs children. Influence with city-states starts at 40. Yields from friendly and allied city-states increase by 75%. Plus 25% combat strength of allied city-state capitals. And plus 10 experience to units gifted by city-states. So... Yeah, some, I wouldn't say particularly powerful bonuses there. The influence with city-states is alright, starts at 40%. So it basically means you become friends straight away with all the city-states that you find uh, when you're exploring. And obviously makes it easier to become allies. Then this city-state yields increased by 75%. Uh, I think it's not so good, like, at the start definitely not as it used to be because I think when you're a friend with someone they give you like one yield per turn uh, say like a faith city state gives you one faith per turn and when that gets increased by 75% uh, it's going to round down to one still so I think you still just get one from, from the friends that you meet at the start which is quite a big difference to how it used to be where you could actually get like a pretty good uh, start from it so you'll probably only get like 10 turns of, of one but it will help you get an alliance where you would get normally two, but you'll get three with the plus 75%. So that can be good if you can do a quick quest or something. Uh, obviously, these are not going to be that relevant. I mean, it's not like you get that many units gifted. And I guess that's kind of useful, but... I don't know. It's not obviously going to be that meaningful compared to some of the other bonuses that are around. And then unique stuff. Oh yeah, this is without unique components, by the way. So unique unit, Narison's Elephant. Uh, this is a unique knight. I'm sure you guys are familiar with this if you were getting unique units from city-states in the few patches ago where it was always these guys or some of the others. Like there was two or three that it was always. And I think these were one of them. So yeah, unique knight, one less movement, two more combat strength. You get this feared elephant promotion, which you get on all elephant units. Um, enemy units minus 10% combat strength when they're adjacent to you, because they are scared. Gets lost with upgrade though, so you only get to keep it if your unit is actually an elephant. And then this bonus versus mounted, plus 50% combat strength versus mounted units. This is also lost with upgrade. I'm never a big fan of units that are lost with, like, where the promotions are lost with upgrade. Obviously, it is going to be quite a powerful unit for the moment that you have it, but then, yeah, you're going to end up with just a normal uh, mounted unit once you upgrade it. Obviously, mounted units are good anyway, but, uh, yeah, I'm never a massive fan of, of unique units where you kind of have to use them in that one uh, era that they're in. Especially because if you assume you're going to be going for diplomatic stuff with the unique ability, then you're probably going to have more wars to fight like later on rather than wanting to rush down conquering people early uh, or early-ish with knights. Um, and then this what, which is a unique uh, constabulary. I guess that's normal constabulary stuff. Plus two science from temples and shrines, and plus one culture from jungle and forest tiles. And then you get some extra yields as well, I don't think Constabulary has any of these. And you also get a scientist slot. Which I don't know if it actually says here. Okay, additional science specialist. So it's quite decent, I mean I guess you're going to get like six science, probably like two or three culture per city, plus one faith. Not amazing, but a decent building, and you get it at Theology instead of uh, Constabularies, which you get at Banking. So you can get it much earlier. Obviously nice if you have a lot of jungle in that about. Um, 
Yeah, so I wouldn't say... I feel like you could pick any of the uh, first policy trees with CM. Like, uh, you got the Narison's Elephant would be good with authority. I feel like these would be good in a wide sieve where you can get a lot of them. But uh, the Extra Specialist w works with Tradition as well. Um, so you could really pick anything depending on what lands you get. But definitely going to be thinking about going towards Statecraft. Um, since that's where you get all the bonuses to city-state stuff. So if you're going to get more yields from having city-state allies, this will help you get more allies. And uh, yeah, help you do more with those allies that you do get. So that's what I'd be thinking with CM before the game starts. Um, yes, so let's see this one. So we are on turn 149. We're kind of near the bottom on 27 techs though, which is not actually behind the majority of civs. It's only really behind uh, Arabia and Morocco, the uh, snowballing tradition dudes. But yeah, fairly equal with the others, so not too bad. But yes, we got the fish start and went for progress with that. Um, yeah, I definitely see that. I'm a big fan of that. Whenever I get a fish start, I feel like uh, I'm always very tempted to go progress. Like in the Assyria game, I didn't go progress, but I actually wish that, that I had. Because I feel like it just gives you a lot of bonuses. Like uh, this helps you get the um, fishing boats out. You can get this fraternity policy, which uh, gives you plus three science from city connections, and you can get the connections uh, quite quickly by just building uh, lighthouses everywhere, rather than having to road everywhere. So it's a bit quicker than uh, trying to get land connections. And you'll probably have like quite a few cities with that are building buildings, and you'll probably have a big capital because you'll be getting a lot of food from the, the fish tiles that you're working. So it definitely works very well with progress, and you need the happiness to uh, account for the fact that you'll have a lot of growth in your cities, so it is nice to be able to grow them. Definitely a fan of that, and obviously you go God of the Sea with that, uh, as long as it doesn't get stolen. Yeah, I generally go, uh, if I'm doing the sea, like God of the Sea stuff, I will just get a shrine, go straight for like fishing. Um, yeah, and then probably go towards sailing as well to get the lighthouses. I'm still not sure whether it's better to still go for expertise before going for fraternity. I feel like most people would argue that it is better to get fraternity, but I do really like having the bonus production and uh, obviously the bonus culture to help you get through the policies quickly because progress can be quite slow with, with the culture if you don't take expertise. But obviously it's annoying to slow that down, the fraternity. I feel like I would lean towards going here so that you could get the fishing boats quicker and the culture and, you know, get to a four policy so that you can build one of the uh, Glass Calera wonders. But uh, I'm sure people would argue for going down the other side. Okay, so let's talk about the religion here. Um... I actually quite like it, to be honest, in general. Obviously, God of the Sea. And then, Founder Belief is Way of the Pilgrim. So, on Founder Beliefs, um, I believe that if you're thinking of going for a Diplo victory, the best way to use your religion is probably going to be to um, try and just make as much faith as possible and convert as many of the cities in the world as you can to your religion. So, like, if you can, I mean, for example, in the last game as Arabia, I took the uh, ceremonial burial uh, founder belief to get loads of bonus faith each time I used a great person, and that allowed me to convert like all the other civs who didn't have their own religion to my religion, and also all the other city-states as well. So it helps you with getting city-state alliances, and if you can get a lot of people following your religion, you can try and get world religion passed in, in World Congress, and uh, 
more chance of getting it passed and more benefit if you do get it passed because you'll get one extra vote for every civilization following your religion and this is on a this is on a standard map i believe but with some extra land and sieves added in so there's actually going to be what 10 sieves and only five religions instead of eight sieves and five religions so five sieves without any religion that you could potentially convert and get world religion with definitely seems like it would be pretty cool but yeah uh, not being tradition means ceremonial burial is going to be nothing like as good and you know not being this is the other uh, founder belief that gives good faith And uh, we're not authority, so wouldn't get the full benefit from that. It could still be worth considering if you made a lot of boats and uh, you could pick off coastal cities. I guess the other ones that do give uh, faith are theocratic rule, which would be decent, the plus percent faith, um, given that you can get quite a lot of faith from uh, God of the Sea. And way of transcendence as well, you could start converting with that and get an era bonus at least. But I don't mind um I don't mind Way of the Pilgrim because you've got a lot of faith generation. So being able to convert that uh, into culture and tourism, which probably won't be useful, but mainly culture. And there's some big sieves around like big city sieves around like uh Morocco and I guess Arabia, but I'm sure there are some other big ones. There always are, so you can get some pretty good yields from that. So I do like it. Uh, pagodas and orders. I do like having buildings with progress uh, in your religion. You get the plus culture from constructing a building when you buy a religious building as well. So that's a good bit of synergy there. And it just works well to have like a wide empire where you have, you know, bonuses spread across all the cities. Uh, you definitely want orders to help you uh, defend your cities since coastal cities can be vulnerable and obviously the bonus experience and stuff on units is good as well and the bonus faith works well with the founder belief and yeah pagodas are probably generally the best building as long as there is a couple of religions floating around which there seem to be you've got two religions in this city or three even in this one two in that one uh three in that one so plus three to all yields it's definitely pretty good, but I uh, could have chosen some other buildings probably. And the Enhancer Belief, I kind of like it as well. Uh, plus two culture and faith in all cities, and plus one faith for every ten gold it produces, so a bit of extra faith as well. I do generally like the religion. Like I said, maybe Transcendence or one of the other founders could have been interesting with the trying to convert people, but this one will, will give you a good late game anyway. Um, I see you went for fealty with that which makes a lot of sense if you're going to be having to buy all these buildings and sending missionaries out I can definitely understand going for fealty opener to get the reduced cost uh, yeah going for the second one we shall discuss that more later so now let's get on to the more economic stuff now i feel like with this religion the absolute thing that you really wanted was borobuda and didn't actually get it um yes so it's hard to comment i guess because i haven't seen the whole game but i feel like this start like this coral monopoly uh, fish start with progress is like one of the faster starts you can get in the game so i feel like if you rush towards borobuda it honestly should be gettable uh i think i i'm pretty sure i have done like a similar thing in the past with you know sieves without any particular bonus just like a coral start with uh with fish um so yeah, obviously, like I said, it's hard to comment because I don't know exactly what happened in terms of maybe it did go early or maybe you went for some other wonders and got beaten to them. Um, Angkor Wat doesn't really make much sense with progress. It gives the bonuses to 
you get a mandir which is nice with a tradition capital and you also uh, get the reduced cost of acquiring new tiles which i feel like is decent with tradition because you kind of need to have big borders to defend yourself um but works very well with authority it's usually when i build anchor what so that you can get more triggers of the tribute policy which gives a lot of yields um yeah i don't really understand it with progress i feel like it's just not that good but maybe it was just it was left and there was nothing else you could go for but like i said i feel like this start is good enough to get you some other stuff like maybe oracle could have been gone for into theology for Bora Buddha. um great lighthouse does make sense i mean you want to go sailing anyway early to get the lighthouses uh, and then you might as well build Great Lighthouse while you're there. It doesn't cost that much more than a lighthouse and uh, gives you some nice other bonuses. The extra movement, a bit of extra production and stuff. Definitely useful with a coastal empire. I would say maybe in this game that going for Great Library first to get into Borobuda would have been better. But uh, I'm not saying like that you should have done that because that obviously is kind of a riskier play. Like you're more likely to get Great Lighthouse, and if you don't, it's not as big of a deal as if you go for writing and then you delay your lighthouses for ages to try and get a great library that you don't even get. So I don't know how early stuff was going. Uh, Roman Forum would have been nice as well, but yeah, I don't know when that went either. Like I said, I just feel like it's possible to get those kind of good starts and when you're using my mod as well it's not like the AIs go that crazy early on that you can't get some of these wonders if you have a good start but you you kind of need to get them to put you in a better position later on and if we had Borobuda uh, we could we wouldn't have any like we could have converted all of our cities to uh, Buddhist easily and you know, had all the buildings and started even sending some of the missionaries over to Marrakesh or something to get some more culture. So that would have been like a bit of a game changer if we actually had that. Uh, yeah, I don't know exactly what happened as in why the start wasn't a bit better. It could potentially be that you expanded a little bit too quickly um, with building new cities maybe or a build order thing like i said i don't know exactly but yeah let's talk about the city so we got quite a few of them up to 11 already that's definitely a lot and yeah it makes sense to go wide with progress with all the fish around and good locations but i do feel like this is a bit too greedy which i think i think you know already but um I can, I feel like I'm okay with like these cities. I feel like in particular this one is just a bit too much. It's so close to Songhai as well. Uh, unless you're seriously going to go for a war with them. But that doesn't seem that wise. Like, I can understand this one a bit because it's got the Great Barrier Reef and it's only close to city states really. I guess this one is alright. But like, the fact that all of our cities are in the same kind of direction from the capital is never really a good thing. Like Sukhothai is here and every city is, is coming down this way. I don't think that's generally the best way to do it. You kind of want to surround your capital with uh, some cities so that your capital doesn't end up being the one that gets attacked if you're in wars. I know it's not as important when you're progress, like technically Technically, you could lose your capital in a progress game, and it's not your holy city anyway. But you did build a great lighthouse here, and Angkor Wat, so it would be a pretty big shame to lose it. And it's pretty screwed <laughs> in terms of where it is right now. It's got like five cities around it, all of them controlled by people who don't really like you. Um, yeah. It seems like it might not end well for Sukhothai, and that would be a big loss. 
So, stuff that could have been done differently there. I feel like uh, a city around here would have been nice on one of these hills. Probably this one. Uh, I know it wouldn't have any fish, but it would be a decent defensive location with the mountain and would be tough for them to surround it due to the fact that you'd have, be able to help out from the capital. Would have stopped these cities here. Um, like, for example, in the Assyria game, that city of uh, Halab, I think it was, that I settled in the mountains. Like, you want a city like that which can be used as like a lightning rod to uh, take all the, the attacks that come to you so that they don't go to your capital. Like, so they... and um, in a place that you can defend it a bit better from. I mean, I know this land isn't as good for defending, so it's definitely a lot more difficult in this game. But uh, something like that, I think, would have been better. Um, yes, and also this city over here, I think I would have put it here. Would have been on a hill then. I don't think it's on a hill here. And would have pretty much had the same stuff except for one at all but it would have stopped this city from from being put here and uh yeah it would have been a bit easier to get to from the capital we'll just put a fort here and you could get the boats through and um on a hill it would have more defense as well and it's not like they would be able to settle here Another thing, this city I think should have been on this deer, uh, it's very very exposed here. I mean wow, what a location, but I think it has to be here, so that number one it's on a hill and number two it's got, it's harder to attack from uh, the sea and it would give you the canal through because this is actually a bit of an awkward bit of land here that you'll probably need to build a, a fort on. I mean I know it's annoying to lose the deer, especially with the, the wok giving it the extra culture, but I think it's definitely worth it for the extra defense. Like, if a navy comes this way, it's going to be another thing you have to worry about defending, whereas it would be a lot easier from there. And you're not actually working that tile right now anyway. Um, but yeah, this... I'm not going to lie, this is a tough place to start. Like, you want to go for the progress, but also having all this flat land near you, and there's not really any great defensive locations i mean maybe you could have put like two cities up here but it's a bit annoying given that they wouldn't have any fish on them to go to do that many and i, I mean maybe attila settled this pretty early as well to be honest so yeah pretty tricky but i think some improvements could have been made I understand that you'd want to go and just get as many of the fish going as possible to get the econom economy going. But I think uh, best time to do it would be like... So I feel like with this start, you want to get the coral monopoly as quickly as possible and get to uh, religion. Obviously with the fishing boats and the atolls. But once the coral monopoly and the religion are secured, then you could sell some uh, more defensive cities rather than just continuing to sell more cities to get more fish. So something like that. All right, let's talk a bit about uh, the policy. So yeah, I'm cool with progress. Obviously, fealty opener makes a lot of sense. Then it's the choice between going back into statecraft or going down the rest of fealty. And I actually agree with going for the rest of fealty here. I feel like it's, you know, it's a tough situation. So fealty gives more like immediate bonuses um, and you can get some more faith from it as well with this one and the finisher. And you definitely want all of your cities to be following your religion. So yeah i do agree with that like more faith that you'll be able to convert back into culture later on as well and you won't have to mess around having like a annoying policy thing where you're wondering if you want to complete statecraft or start one of these other policies so i do agree with that and um we don't actually have any uh city state allies and only one friend which i feel like shouldn't happen um like, 
I find it hard to believe that there was no missions to get allies that you could have done because we're on like no uh, influence with anyone so unless you got like really unlucky with that it feels like uh, you should have at least some friends or allies by this point that could have made statecraft better for, for picking but obviously with no allies then it's not as good so yeah obviously I can't comment fully because I haven't seen the whole game but it feels like there must have been something that could have been done to get some allies that would have been better with the bonus from uh, CM so that definitely would have helped maybe uh, maybe it could have been exploration like maybe you should have explored differently to not find some of the sieves so that you could get the find a sieve um, quest that gives stuff or maybe it's just not prioritizing like trade routes to city states or um, building or just doing the things they say and killing barb camps and stuff so yeah general situation I do feel like the game is very difficult given the vulnerableness of the capital and some of the other cities as well without like enough of a fleet to defend them but I think um I think it's still winnable just because this founder belief is going to allow for a lot of catch up later on and like the economy is decent like 223 science per turn 29 sorry I think is pretty good uh, the faith is pretty good culture is not amazing but isn't terrible and like I said we can get a lot of culture from the founder belief later so I would uh, say you just need to build a lot of units right now uh, <laughs> to defend some fleets and it probably will be a bit rough I imagine some of these cities might be lost so it probably wouldn't be a fun game to play but still possible to win um, economically speaking would be a shame to not get Forbidden Palace but yeah going sh steel and getting units makes sense as well but yeah it would be a shame not to get this with progress and this game actually has another mod it's like monopoly buildings or something so this is like an additional building that works with coral so you do want to go civil service as soon as possible but yeah uh, this could be a bit of a critical time I mean you can buy some time with castles and with the extra defense from the orders as well will make the cities quite difficult to capture but some of them are super vulnerable so might still be difficult probably could try and do a bit more exploring with this guy get him upgraded to a uh, explorer probably have some other city states to find maybe not actually or maybe not many there's something like 14 here out of probably 16 that exist so fair enough um, I guess not a whole lot to do there uh, I would actually go for glory of god reformation belief here if you can get it uh, I feel like it will be nice to have that um, flexibility of it and since we're not going statecraft anyway the these ones make less sense I think uh, faith of the masses is already gone so unless you wanted to go for divine teachings which would be all right I feel like uh, glory of God would be a bit better um, you'll I mean you'll be able to get writers anyway but it'll be nice to potentially be able to go industry or imperialism not have to go rationalism to get uh, scientists get some great engineers to get some wonders later on and um, yeah fill up great work slots with some of the other great people so that's what I would recommend a couple of other smaller things uh, we don't have any trade routes maybe they've been killed maybe not but I'm sure there are some very good ones available uh, plus six science and uh, 13 gold definitely isn't bad and Morocco would probably like you more if you traded with him you could denounce him uh, 
he's denounced by a lot of people, so that could help you diplomatically to uh, try and befriend all the other people. Uh, you actually have a lot of friends, so if you got a decent army, you could get some defensive packs as well, I reckon. And yeah, need an army anyway. Probably these boats should be over here somewhere. And I would just build castles everywhere. Uh, since you took the fealty policy that makes them built quicker as well. I'd probably prioritise them before building any other economic buildings like barracks and stuff like that. Um, there's a quest for Scriveners as well. Definitely would be good to do that and you get a diplomat so that you can get an alliance with somebody like that city state for example the quest plus the the diplomat would be enough uh wait is it a diplomat you get emissary that's what they're called at this point yes and actually one other thing i noticed is that you're probably over focusing culture right now which is pretty crazy for me to be saying that. Uh, there's three guilds running culture right now. One in capital, one there, and one there. I honestly think at this point, the things that you need more is uh, science and production. Particularly production. To build some more military units. Um, to try and defend. Like, since we've gone fealty, we're more of like a war focused uh, policy anyway rather than statecraft trying to you know build diplomats and that and get alliances so you kind of might as well build some units and need more production to do that and if you can like you know kill units in wars you'll get even more faith and i think you can uh, recover the culture later on with the founder belief uh, you have already got a great work of writing i believe so just once you've built the heroic epic you'll be able to fill up an amphitheatre or Oxford University anyway. So don't necessarily need more great writers. Though you might as well finish that one off anyway. It's nice to have another great work, but yeah, could potentially focus a forge here or something instead. I would say But yeah man. Tricky, tricky game. Like I said, I do feel like in general you're not doing too bad. It's just gonna be it's gonna be difficult to get any wonders in a Renaissance era. Um, so probably just gonna have to do some war stuff and uh, try and come back with the culture from a Way of Pilgrim later on. Even if you can't conquer people, just get the faith for killing units and then. Uh, get some nice policies that can help you be in the game later on and the fact that you're not winning will mean that you won't you'll be more able to make friends as we can see here so it won't be as annoying as if you were in this position and doing well like <laughs> um that would be a big problem because everybody would then try and attack you like all the time but you might fly under the radar a bit It'd be interesting to see though but yeah, thanks for sending this in. Tried to keep this one brief. Um, yeah, so probably final Arabia video will come out tomorrow. I think I will do a live stream on most likely Tuesday. Uh, we'll just, you know, play a random sieve, have a bit of fun. You can ask any questions or whatever. Uh, we can just chat about Vox Populi patch and all that stuff. Um, yeah, and think about what I want to play for my next series as well. And I will also do a live stream of Rome Total War next Saturday, I believe. So if you're interested in that, make sure you tune in for that. Cool. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you all soon. And send me in your games using the link in the description if you want me to take a look at them.